grab a USB drive. Go ahead and plug it into your USB port of your computer. Once you've done that, go to your computer, open up an internet browser, and go to freepbx.org like so. We're going to be downloading the latest version. Go ahead and click on download free PBX and download the free PBX distro. Choose the most stable version. Do not download the ISO image. We're going to be choosing IMG image. While that image is being downloaded, search for Win32 Image Writer. Click on that first link and we're going to be downloading this program. This program is going to write the image to the USB drive for us. Wait to the image, wait to the program downloads. Once the program downloads, double click on the installation file to install the program. Click on next, accept the license, next, next, next. Choose desktop icon if you would like. Next. Go ahead and uncheck those two. We do not want to start the program just yet. Now that the image has finished downloading, open the program. Make sure that your E drive or whatever drive for the USB drive is chose correctly. Navigate to your download folder. In my scenario, I'm using different users, so I'll navigate to the download program and double click on the image file. Click write. It'll take about 10 minutes. Once it's done, it is going to say successfully written. Once you do that, unplug the USB drive, take it to your other computer where you're going to install the server. Here, I'm showing you what the connections look like. This is my VGA connection for my monitor. That's my LAN connection coming from my router or switch. That's my keyboard, and that's the USB drive that we plugged in earlier. It is now plugged in in this computer. Go ahead and start up your computer. Hit F12 to go to the boot up menu. That option may be different in your PC. Once you're in the boot up menu, choose the USB device and press enter. You will see this menu pop up. Press the first one, choose the first one, and press enter. Here I'm going to try to expedite the video as much as possible. That way you'll see what the process looks like. Press tab and then hit OK. Leave everything as default. Choose your time zone. Very important. Once you choose your time zone, hit tab and then OK. Choose a secure password. For this example, I am using password 123 dollar sign. The system is not going to like it. It's going to ask me if I want to use it and I will tell it yes. Please choose a very secure password. Press OK. Mine, I press Use Anyway. Once you get to this stage, you're completely done. You can come back in about 30 minutes. The system will have completely done everything for you. I will continue the video just to give you an idea what the next steps would look like. But you do not have to watch the rest of this video. Here, the system is at 100%. Once you see that, it will initiate a reboot. The system is now rebuilding.
you will see a status bar at the bottom give you an idea on the boot up process. It is currently updating all the modules. Once it is done, it'll go into a login prompt. Once you see the login prompt, everything is fully installed and you can go ahead and log in. The login would be root, R-O-O-T, all lowercase. And then the password is the password that you set up. In this scenario, it's password one two three dollar sign press enter look for the ip address that i'm pointing to there that's the ip address of your machine go back to your computer and type in that ip address in your internet browser choose a username after that choose a secure password here i'm picking up I'm picking a non-secure password and the system does not like it. I go back to it and I'm going to give it a more secure password. As you can see, the system likes the more secure password. After that, input your email address. Click on the guy with glasses and put in the username and password you just created a second ago. Here, just follow the steps, read that, go ahead and skip all that stuff if you don't want to buy any of that stuff. Hit submit. It's going to ask you a couple of things about the uh, firewall. In most cases, I tell everybody to disable the firewall if you already have a router in place. So read all those options, um, choose what's best for your network. If you have any questions about that, let us know and we will gladly help you in this step. You do not have to do this step. Just let us know and we'll configure everything for you. Apply config and you're fully done.